Hello world, Noah here. I have a fun video today. Today we're going to be implementing the classic balance parentheses problem in one line in Python. Now if you don't know what the balance parentheses problem is, it has to do uh, with you getting a string of parentheses and square brackets and, um, and curly braces. Um, and you basically have to determine if the string is balanced, right? So whenever you have an open uh, symbol, it should be followed by a closed symbol, you know, somewhere. So this string would be perfectly valid, right? But for example, something like this would not be valid, right? You have a closed parenthesis before the open parenthesis. Or if you have a situation like this, right? You're closing this open parenthesis here, but you have this open square bracket inside that hasn't been closed, right? So these examples are invalid. Now, I'd highly recommend that you go on YouTube and you uh, look at some other videos about balance parentheses. I debated about making a video of my own, but it's been done a lot of times before. It's fairly straightforward. I don't really have all that much to, to add to what's already been done. So I'd recommend checking it out if you don't already know the problem and you don't know the solution, because I'm going to assume that you know the solution um, involving a stack in order to solve this. And I'm also going to assume that you are pretty familiar with Python because we're going to have to do some sort of weird things in order to um, you know, get this algorithm implemented in one line. And of course, I would never recommend that you do something like this in an in interview setting um, or anything like that or in production code, but just for fun, it can be fun. It's a good puzzle. It forces you to really understand Python. Um, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And so I should clarify what exactly I mean by one line. When I say one line, what I really mean is one expression, right? And so when I write the code, I'm going to spread it out on multiple lines to make it readable. But the basic idea is that you could actually, um, you know, condense this all into one line and it would be one single expression, right? And so that means that there's a lot of things that are out. We can't define functions, at least the normal way. We can't use if statements or while loops or anything like that. But Python has a lot of other tools that we can use. And so, of course, we're going to put a lot of them to use. And so let's go ahead and get started and see how this is going to work out. Um, the first thing is we're going to be printing our answer. We're going to be printing true or false, whether the string is balanced or not balanced. And so we need a print statement. And I'm going to write all of my code inside of the print statement. And you can see that this is spanning three lines right now. It's still one expression. And so when I say one line, I mean one expression. Now, when you're implementing the balance parentheses algorithm, normally you would have two variables. The first variable would be uh, the user's input. And the second variable would be the stack where you're keeping track of all of the open symbols, right? And so we need to have two variables, but we can't just declare two variables because declaring uh, a variable is, an, is a statement. It would take up its own line it would ruin our one line idea. But what we can do is we can abuse lambda functions for this. Just to explain it very briefly, the idea is that we could have a, um, a, a lambda function that has our expression and our stack as two inputs, and it does, you know, does something. We'll, we'll fill this in. You know, we could just have it be true for now, right? Um, and so we can define this lambda expression, this lambda uh, function, which has these two variables that we want. And then we can say, well, let's do this. Let's define the lambda function. Let's put it in parentheses. So this right here that I have selected, it's, it's an expression and its value is this lambda function. And then we can go ahead and call this lambda function immediately and we can give it some values. And so for the expression, we want to give input and for the stack, we want to give an empty list. And so what we're doing is we're defining this function, right? And then we're immediately calling it. And when we call it, we're saying we want to pass input and this empty list is, uh, as our uh, parameters, as our arguments. Um, and so this input will be the value of expression, whatever the user typed in, and the empty list will be the value for stack. And so this is sort of our trick that lets us declare as many variables as we want uh, while still being in one expression. And I'm going to um, just redo it like this to make it um, a little bit easier to follow. But again, this is the idea. Now we have our two variables declared and um, we are still only at one expression. 
And so now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Now we're ready to actually implement the algorithm. And we're going to start with, um, you know, basically, basically the next thing that we would do is we have our variables. We need to loop through um, all of the characters in the string. We want to loop through all of the open and closed symbols and, you know, do our work one symbol by one. And so we can't just use a for loop, but we have our uh, list comprehensions or generator comprehensions or whatever comprehensions in Python that we can use here. Um, and in order to actually be able to use that, we have to be a little bit clever. And so the idea that I am going to use is that for each symbol, we're going to map the symbol to a Boolean value. We're going to transform each symbol to a Boolean value, which will be true if the string is fine up to this point, and it's going to be false if the string is not fine up to this point. And so what I mean is that if we see uh, an input that looks like this, for example, when we see an open parenthesis, we're going to push it onto the stack and we're going to say, okay, everything's fine up to this point. We haven't come across any issues yet. Then when we see this closed parenthesis, we're going to pop off the stack. We're going to say, oh, okay, these match, you know, open and closed parenthesis. And so there's no problem yet and so again, we're going to say that there's no problem yet and return true at that point. And then if we make it all the way to the end of the string and we haven't found a problem yet, it means that we haven't found a problem in the entire string, right? To give another example, if our input just looks like this, close parenthesis, or let's say it looks like this, more interesting. Um, we'd say, okay, open parenthesis, no problem yet. Close parenthesis, no problem yet. We get to the second close parenthesis. We say, oh, well, the stack's empty at this point. So there is a problem here and we would return, we would say that this character, there is a problem. So this character would map to false, right? And then, you know, you can imagine if we had, um, you know, sort of this example here, we would say again, no issue yet, no issue yet. When we get to here, we'd say, oh, there is an issue here, right? There is an issue because we have an open square bracket on the top of the stack and we have a closed um, uh, parenthesis that we've come across. Right, And so the idea is that we're going to loop through, we're going to take each character of the input, each symbol in the input, and we're going to map it to a Boolean value that's true if we're okay up to this point and false uh, if we're not. And if every single value that we get is true, if everything is okay up to every single point, then it means that we're actually okay for the entire string and the string is valid. But if any one of those is false, you know, here, for example, then that means that there's a point where we're not okay, and so therefore the string is not valid. And so to accomplish this, we can use the built-in Python function called all. And all is going to take an iterable, we can just think of it as a list, um, and it's going to return true if all of the elements in that list are true, and it's going to return false if any element, at least one element in that list, is false. And so the idea is that we can express in here if all of these characters, if all of the symbols in the input string are okay, then the entire string is okay, right? And so now inside of this all, we can go ahead and write our, um, our comprehension. And um, I guess this will end up being a generator comprehension the way I'm doing it. You could add square brackets here and make it a list comprehension if you'd like. It really doesn't make a difference at all. But now inside of here, we're going to say, we're gonna do something um, for each character in the expression, right? So here's our, here's our comprehension. Um, we're going to uh, basically take for each character in the expression, we need to map this character to a Boolean value that's true if we're okay and false if we're not okay, right? And so this uh, underscore, this is the, the, uh, the big question. And so the first thing that we should do is we should say, well, if we come across an open symbol, we just want to put it on the stack and move on, right? We, if we see an open symbol, we're always going to say that we're okay up to that point, right? Uh, we just stick it in the stack and, we're, and we move on. So we want to go ahead and uh, append the symbol to the stack um, if the character is an open symbol. And then otherwise we're going to have to do something else, right? Else, uh, you know, we can we can fill that in. So basically, we're going to say if the character is in an open uh, parenthesis, so it's open square bracket, open curly brace, um, then we want to append the 
um, we want to append the character to the stack, we just want to push it onto the stack and move on. Now the problem is that if we look at append, um, and I guess it's not really important to actually look at the code, but append will return none. Append just sticks the character on the stack and returns none, and as you hopefully know, none in Python is falsy, which means that this expression right here would be treated as false as far as, as, far as all is concerned, and we would actually want it to be treated as if it were true, because when we append an open symbol or when we see an open symbol, we want to say that we're good up to this point. And so this is like super, super hacky, but the way that we can deal with this is we can just add an or true like this. And so what does this do? Well, stack.append uh, whatever is always going to return none. Okay, it's not going to return anything. And none is falsy. So when we say or true, all right, anything or true is going to be true. So this falsy value, this will basically evaluate to false, and we have false or true, which is going to be true. And so this is sort of a hack that turns this, um, this you know, function call that would return a falsy value to return true instead. And so um, we've basically dealt with that. And so now the next thing we need to do is we need to say, well, if we come across a closed symbol, and we're just going to assume that every um, that every symbol in the string is uh, is an open or closed symbol. I mean, I guess it's really not that hard to deal with like letters and operators and anything else that you don't care about. Um, but basically, if we come across a closed symbol, then we need to pop off the stack and make sure that the closed symbol that we just found matches the open symbol that was at the top of the stack. And so let's actually go ahead and do that. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually define a dictionary that's going to just represent um, you know, the, the mappings between a closed symbol and its corresponding, uh, between an open symbol and its corresponding closed symbol. So that's very simple, right? And so then what we can do is if we have this dictionary right here, and we say that we want to get the value associated with the key, right? So if the, if the keys in this dictionary are the open symbols, right, we know the open symbol is going to be on the stack because we're pushing all of the open symbols onto the stack. And so we want to pop off the stack, right? And we pass into this dictionary. So if we had pushed in a, uh, an open parenthesis onto the stack, then we'd go in here and say, oh, we had an open parenthesis. Well, that will the value will then be a closed parenthesis. And we want to make sure that this value that we get is equal to the character that we're looking at right now, right? And so just to demonstrate, because this, again, is pretty complicated, when we get to this open parenthesis, we're going to say, OK, well, this open parenthesis is in It's one of these three. So we're just going to push it onto the stack, right? So the stack contents will just be this open parenthesis. And then when we get to this close parenthesis, we're going to say, OK, well, it's not one of these things. So we got to go to the else statement. Then when we do stack.pop, we're going to pop off this open parenthesis. And then we're indexing this dictionary. So we're going to go over here and say, OK, well, here's the open parenthesis. The value is close parenthesis. And so now we're comparing this whole thing, which in this case is close parenthesis, to the character that we just looked at which again is close parenthesis. And so this will handle the case um, you know, where we basically have something like this, for example, or even the classic, the classic example like this, where we come across this um, close parenthesis right here. And when we pop off the stack, we would get this open square bracket, which would correspond to the closed square bracket. But we're looking at a closed parenthesis, not a closed square bracket. And so these would not be equal, and we would want to return false. right? And so um, basically, this is to handle the closed case is that um, we just make sure that we have the, the correct open symbol at the top of the stack that matches the closed symbol that we just found. And this is if we're looking at a closed symbol. Um, and then otherwise, if we uh, see any other symbol, you know, it could be letters, numbers, uh, operators, whatever, we can just return true, right? And so if we have, you know, one plus one like this, or maybe there's even spaces in there, we don't care about any of this stuff. So we can say that we're okay, you know, up at the point that we see a one or a space or a plus, because we don't care about it. All we really care about are the parentheses and square brackets and uh, curly braces, right? And so that's good. And so we're almost done, but we still haven't handled a case like this, right? 
If we have a case like this or, or a more complicated version of this, then when we see the open parenthesis, we would append to the stack um, and then this is the only value and we just go ahead and return true, right? But this should be false. This is not balanced because it doesn't have a closed parenthesis. And so normally in the algorithm, the last step that you do is you'd make sure that the stack is empty, right? Uh, at the very end. And so this bit presents an interesting challenge because how do we know that we're actually at the end of the input? Because all we have here is um, you know this expression, which is a string, and we're looping through each value. How do we know when we've reached the end? Well, you could do something a little bit. You could do a complicated thing that involves you know you could use the enumerate function and you know keep track of the you know the length of the string and whatever whatever. Um, but what I would propose that we do is we modify the input a little bit, um, and so we're going to just take our input string and convert it to a list. So it's just a list of characters. Um, and so our, our for uh, loop, our list comprehension will work the same way. But I want to add to it, I want to append to that list um, this value none, right? So basically if the input looks like this, then the input would map it to a list that contains uh, an open, a closed, an open, a closed, and then none, right? Because we're adding this, this just none value. And so for a regular old, old for loop, this would work normally, right? It would just loop, it would do open, closed, open, closed, like we were doing before. But now we have this none value at the end. And so now we know that if our character is the value none, that we're at the end, and this can trigger our check at the end. And so again, this isn't the only way to implement this sort of end detection behavior, but um, I think it's a pretty nice way uh, of going about it. I think it um, introduces minimal um, complexity to the code to make it work. And so then all we need to do is we need to just make sure that the stack is, uh, is empty. So if char is none, we need to make sure that the stack is empty, right? Because this means that we're at the end of the string. Otherwise, we're just going to you know, do everything that we we're doing before, right? And to make sure it's empty, we just need to just say, uh, we need to say that the length of the stack must be equal to zero. Um, if we're at the end, otherwise, so on and so forth, do what you're doing before, right? And so this right here is a uh, a fully working uh, solution. There is actually there is actually one minor issue that I uh, that I forgot, and that's just that if we pop and the um, stack is empty, we would it would raise an exception right now. So we just have to make sure um, that the stack is not empty and then we are good right so just here if the stack is actually empty at this point we see a closed uh, symbol and the stacks empty then we know that we're not okay and we want to return false right and so this is our finalized fully implemented fully working algorithm I'll run through a few um, test cases um, just to demonstrate it. But I want to really quickly go over again uh, the, the general idea. First, we did this sort of hack with the lambda expression so that we could have these um, expression variable and the stack variable. I guess the expression variable is only used in one place, so we could have inlined it. But um, at least the stack, which is used uh, in a couple of different places, we kind of needed to have that as a variable. So the lambda expression uh, lambda function helped us out there. Then we had this concept of making sure that everything is okay up to this point, and that if we check all of the characters and it's okay at every single point, then we know that the string is valid. And so then we said basically if we've reached the end of the string, that the stack has to be empty, right? If we see an open symbol, we just want to push it onto the stack, but we want to return true because we're okay up to this point. Uh, or if we see a closed symbol, we need to make sure that there is an element on the stack and that the element on the stack uh, is the open symbol that matches the closed symbol that we just found. Or if it's not any of these symbols, if it's some other letter or number or symbol, um, then we don't care about it. And we can just say, okay, that's fine, whatever. Um, and so this is this is it, right? This is one single expression. It's spread out on 13 different lines, but you could easily, you know, just put this all on one single line, and uh, and you'd be good to go. But it is one single expression. There's um, 
and, and you know that's that's the goal that's the challenge here and so now I'll go ahead and um, demonstrate I'll do some uh, some examples um, and we'll check them out so first example will be this one this one should return true right this is balance parentheses here and it returns true uh, the next example will be this one you know we have these two groups on the inside and the one on the outside this should return true and it does this example should obviously return false and it does so this is where we have the um, closed parenthesis without the corresponding open parenthesis um, if we have this example here's a closed parenthesis without an open returns false as we'd expect and this example right here has three open and two closed so this open parenthesis does not have a closed to go with it and this returns false as we'd expect and then just to demonstrate I guess those all involved um, parentheses so we can um, do the classic example um, here which would return false of course um, you know we could get a little bit more interesting you know here's here's a complicated example I forgot you can't get back the console is a little bit weird you can't you can't actually go backwards you so I don't know here's a random example this is um, valid and our algorithm says true um, I don't know I mean I think you could probably take my word for it that it works um, and then just to give an example if we do something with other random symbols uh, it'll ignore those symbols but our parentheses have to be balanced obviously and so we could give another example where we um, you know this is invalid because we have an open and not a closed whatever hopefully you can take my word for it that this uh, code works you're more than welcome to um, test it out for yourself um, you know you could try implementing it here's proof that the empty string returns true right empty strings balanced no parentheses but you certainly wouldn't say that it's unbalanced um, and there are some places that you could that you could change this algorithm you know there's there's different ways to implement this algorithm in a single expression so you could play around with uh, with tweaking different parts of it and seeing what you can come up with um, but that's basically all for this video I just thought it would be sort of a fun challenge it's kind of a little bit of a weird idea um, not really something that you'd want to do necessarily but um, it's kind of fun kind of a cool thing to show off um, and you have to really understand Python and some of the little quirks of it in order to be able to pull this off and understand it and so that's all for this video uh, I hope you enjoyed and found it interesting um, you know if you like this video click the like button comment below what you want to learn what you want me to talk about um, uh, you know subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys in the next one bye for now